Guys, in this video, number three out of 10, I will show you how we can get all the users from the database and we're going to fetch them obviously inside an array because there are plenty of users and each user is going to be an individual JSON object. Let's get started with the code. So actually, just to show you, we are in video number three now. Look at this video description to get all the links and watch all the other videos. Let's go to this code and let's point to get users this file here. In video one, we did this. In video two, we did that, just for you to understand it. Let's go to Postman. Let's close all these routes that we had before the request there, and then we point to get users. When we run this get users, we actually get this out. Mm, oh, it cannot connect to the database. Oh, let's see why. It's running fine. Get users. I think that's a good example of the video so we can see why we cannot connect to the database. So we're going to check this. I'm going to take this line away. And we actually do get the data. And when we do that, we don't get the data. Let's open the database file. And over here, I was using root x. I'm not sure if we had this bug in the other video, I don't think so. So I just fix it. Now it's root, the username. Nothing will change here because I have just this hard coded data in there. So now we are connected again in the database to the database and now we are going to get the users from it. If I show you what we have in the database at the moment in PHP my admin, we can see that we have these two users and this is what I'm going to get via the API now. So that's VS code and that's Postman. Let's start checking that. In VS code, instead of sending this hard-coded data, I will send the data that I will get from the database. To do that, to connect to the database, I'm going to do a try catch. Go to the previous videos to understand that. That's in video two. And I will get a PDO exception, EX. You can call this whatever you want. And if we have an issue, we're going to send an error back to Postman, back to Svelte when we get to the front end. And these errors can happen in many places. Imagine that the name is incorrect. Imagine that the image is too big. Imagine that we have an error because we are validating something and the email doesn't fulfill the requirements. So to do that, and since that is an error that happens or could happen several times, I'm going to create a function here. I will call it ERR for the sake of saving a little bit of space for teaching you this, you could call this send error. Actually, a function should always be an action. So this will be a valid action. This will send an error to the front end or to whomever, whoever is calling this API. But just to save a little bit of horizontal space, I hope that you understand me that I would just say ERR. Let me put some comments here. I will do this like so, and then I will just duplicate this line like so. So this will be in every file I have, this error message file. And this error will have to take different arguments because sometimes you want to say that the name is invalid. Sometimes you want to tell that the image is invalid. So I'm going to create a message variable. And I also want to know in which line number the error occur. So we just do a debug. And this will come from this video that I'm at the moment, that's video three. So the message and the debugging that will be the line number. And what I will pass back to the user is this echo. And it will look like a JSON object. And this will be converted automatically to a valid JSON object. Go and check this video. Over here, we're going to send the status. The status will always be zero because that is an error. Then we will have the message and the debug. Let's break this into lines so you can see all this taking place. Like so. 
the message will be whatever I pass in this message. So by default, let's say that you forget to pass the message, it will display an error and the line by default will be line number zero. So if you see error or zero is because you did not pass the arguments when you call this function. The message will be the message that I pass and this will be a concatenation. So the message will be here, for example, this is an error. So over here we'll do concatenation and then I pass the message. The last element I want to pass is the debug. This will be number line number, let's say 19. So I take this 19 and then I will just concatenate with the debug variable. Make this look is a little bit nicer. So that will be the reply that I will send back to the front end. And obviously, if something went wrong, I will just exit the application. So this function will be used over and over and over. Now that we go inside the catch, so for example, here we can say error, because that's the catch that we're getting into. We are going to pass the message and we're going to pass the line number. The message will say error executing query. Let's do that. Because over here, I will create the query to get all the users and the line number in which I get the exception, it's here. So let's go and create the query. That will be an, a SQL query. So what we do is we say query for the sake of horizontal space, I wish is to a Q. That will be the query that I'm going to run e equals. And then I will point to the DB variable, which comes from this file, which is that one. And then I'm going to prepare the statement. This you must do because you're working with PDO and you must use it to connect to the database and execute the query correctly. And this is a simple query. I know that most of you would like to do the select all from and so on because you are too good. So you don't need to go to the SQL environment to test it. You should never write a query here before you have tested it. Eventually, you will get into a lot of errors. And if you write the query here, debugging it, if you have an issue, may take a few hours. But if you write the query here, debugging it will take just a few seconds. So I will write the select the statement, select all from users. And then I will press Control Enter. You could also have just gone to the go button there, but I do control enter. This was running fine and it gave me these users here. So this is a valid command. I copy it and now I'm going to put it inside VS Code. This is how you should do it professionally speaking. So now that you have the query ready, you need to execute the query. Execute. You're going to run it. You don't need to put an if statement around this because you have already told the database that if something goes wrong, you are going to catch this in this exception mode. So you don't need to do anything else but just surround the statement in a try catch. Then we execute the statement and this statement will give us rows. This statement will give us this row and that row inside an array. So let's go and say that the rows equals the query and we're going to fetch everything that this query return. Since this is working fine, this echo is the last thing that we should send to the user. So we move it up there and then we can explicitly end the application. This status one has this data and the data is an array. Let me make a few mistakes here in purpose. I will just delete the internal elements and leave the array as such. And then I'm going to send the rows inside the array. If you want to do that, you can concatenate rows and then I concatenate like so. Since I'm opening with single quotes, I concatenate with single quotes. Save, move to Postman. Look at this error. It says that it cannot convert an array to text. 
and this is an array so we need to make it explicitly into test so we use json encode rows you may think wow that's working fine it's not if you look at the data key property it has an array which contains an array so what we do is we take this and that away and now we should get just one array with the user a as an object and user b as an object let's go back to the database part here remember that i told you about this line before in video number two i will comment this line out and see what you get out when you comment it out you get this out because now you're working with position zero position one and position two and also the keys of the array and of the element and that is really really bad to use therefore this line is appropriate to have it there i will put here a little comment so you can go and watch this if you have seen this in video three save save reload postman it's working fine fine let's make a mistake let's pretend that you didn't know better and then you say select all from users let's do that all like a query mistake then when you run it you see error executing query because this failed therefore we went to the catch and then we fix it and then we are back on guys if you have been following this video series please you know the deal it really helps me a lot go ahead subscribe I really need it now like the video get notifications in the next video i'm going to show you how to get one specific user thanks for watching